clients. Uh, let us understand what is HR metrics. And before we understand HR metrics, I went through the dictionary meaning of metrics, which says that it is a standard for measurement. But what do I measure and why should I measure? How should I measure? When should I measure? Becomes a big question to us. It is like saying that I have to reach a place from my home and I have three different routes. So I check on the maps and I find that there are, there are three different timings and one route is saying 10 minutes, another is saying 15 minutes, the third one is saying 20 minutes. I take the route of 10 minutes. But this thing changes as per the traffic situation in the whole day. There is another perspective that maybe this particular route of 10 minutes is a little longer than others just because of traffic it is happening so. So there are a number of ways by which I can look at it. I can have ratio. So there is a ratio of 10 is to 15 is to 20. Or I might, I might say that uh, the, comparing the first and second route, uh, I find that the first route is more effective. So here I would say that uh, there is a difference of 5 minutes, 10 minutes and 15 minutes. And hence I am trying to say that uh, it is saving me a lot of time in the form of percentage. But the question arises in HR, what kind of metrics should I look forward to? So there are a lot of uh, ratios and percentages in which we can relate to all our HR functions. But uh, here I would propose that let us think from the perspectives given by the balance scorecard. So the balance scorecard had four perspectives. The first one was the customer perspective. Here we'll assume it to be employee perspective. The second is the stakeholder perspective. Here we'll assume that stakeholder to be the management. The third was the internal process. So the pure HR function, how it's doing it. And the fourth is the learning and the growth part, wherein we talk about the gaps and we can talk about the other things. So let us look from the individual point of view. So as an employee, what are the things that concern an employee? So as an individual, what concerns is uh, coming on time. Second, we can talk about absenteeism. We can talk about how much average time an employee is giving to the organization per day. We can talk about the attrition rate of an employee. How many people have left in the whole financial year? That is one of the norms. How many employees left within three months of joining? That's again something pertaining to an individual. Is an employee satisfied? How many are satisfied? How many employees are engaged? So these are the kind of metrics that we can explore from the individual point of view and there are many. It, these are some of them. The second perspective was of the stakeholders that is we are seeing from the management point of view. So what is the management interested in? They are talking about the output. So they are talking about the efficiency ratios. How much is the revenue per employee? How much is the cost incurred on employee? Let us look at the third perspective which talks about the internal process. So we have different HR functions happening all around. So say for example let us pick up the talent acquisition function. So what are the yield ratios? So what we are saying is that say for example 1000 people applied for a particular profile and we finally picked up hardly 5 of them. So what is the ratio? 5 upon 1000. That is the ratio or percentage in which we are hiring. So that becomes one of the important ratios. You talk about the training part, how many people were trained this year, this financial year. We can talk about the compensation part, how many employees get the incentives of what level. What is the incentive per employee that has been distributed. So there are a number of ways of doing it. The fourth perspective talks about learning and growth. Now here what we are talking about is learning. So we are talking about the gap part. So when we talk about the gap part, we say that after the performance appraisal, how many people or how many employees were rated as satisfied? So there is a gap, right? So we try to bridge that particular gap and talk about the growth part of the employees. So what is happening here is that we are saying that how many employees were rated above satisfactory? How many employees were rated below satisfactory? What is the ratio? In case I say that they have been rated as below satisfactory, what is the likelihood that they have stayed with us? So how many people who are rated below satisfaction level retained with us? So there are a number of ways by which we can oppose these ratios. And one of the most important one is the return on investment. So when I talk about return on investment, 
It is like saying that ROI for talent acquisition, which means whatever process that we have made to get that particular employee on board, well, we have incurred a lot of cost on that. So we want, what is that return once we have that person? Say for example, I said, just picked up only five candidates out of thousand people who applied. Now, during that process, probably we had some advertisement expenses, we had our employees traveling to places, or we made some reimbursements. And if not anything else, we had the opportunity cost of our employees putting up that particular process. So we have a lot of uh, investment that we have done for acquiring the talent, and hence we are calculating the ROI on talent acquisition. Similar is the case with the training and development. So when I say that training program has been done, a lot of cost has been incurred on training and development. If not exactly the direct cost, we have the opportunity cost. If I have, say for example, 30 employees engaged in a training program, uh, think from that perspective, for three days, if I have the training program, three days those employees were not actually giving me any output. So I'm losing something on that particular front. Or maybe I'm making others do something extra. Or these guys will do something extra once they get back on the job. So think from those perspectives that we have ROI of training and development. We have got ROI of talent acquisition. And uh, that's how we talk about all the metrics around. A lot depends on an organization as to what is more important to them. And hence they can focus on the different HR metrics as per their own uh, feasibility and importance. Uh, we might look from the perspective of HR scorecard as well where we talk about the HR deliverables, what exactly we want the HR department to deliver to the organization and based on that we can focus on some specific metrics and we can give some benchmarks as well and say how many of them went above this level and how many were below this level and this helps us in understanding the whole status of the organization. Hope you'll be able to apply some more because there are n number of metrics available, n number of combinations available. Happy learning.